Hi folks, I'm Matt Crump, your host on Hope Revealed. And on this episode of Hope Revealed, we welcome our special guest, Orlando Javier. Join us as we learn a bit more about him personally, as well as what he offers his clients and his friends. So make sure you subscribe now to Hope Revealed if you haven't already. You can tune in and watch it or just listen as we share moments of hope, ways to get through the dark times, and there's always, always, always a way to find a Hope Revealed. Welcome. Hello, my name is Orlando Javian. Uh, I consider myself to be the man of many hats. Uh, I am a husband, father, uh, bookkeeper, tax preparer, and an author and speaker. Author of the books uh, God Moments and Unplugged. They are books on how I encountered God. Uh, Simple stories on how you could find God, how you can find hope in the most unusual places like finding God, picking up underwear, or uh, stop Googling yourself, as my wife tells me. And um, if you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on YouTube. You can find me on LinkedIn, where I share business tips, I share motivation, and most of all, I share God moments. So I'd love to connect with you and um, share those moments with you. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Hope Revealed. Super, super excited to have an incredible guy that I'd love to share with you. Most of you here that are watching on LinkedIn may have had a chance to already engage with and and meet him. Um, I see here he goes by OJ, but uh, you obviously know Mr. Orlando, and uh, I think of Tony Orlando and Don every time I think of your name. They're old 70s singers and dancers. Oh, no, I remember. I remember. Yeah, yeah, Tony Orlando and Don. But anyway, that's Orlando. I wonder if that's where they thought about your name when they were giving you the name back then. It'd be, <laughs> <laughs> it'd be amazing. So uh, super excited to have you here on Hope Revealed today, Orlando. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Matt, for having me. I love it. Yeah, it's been great. We've had some fun getting ready for the show today. We've been in a couple of locations already. We've gone from your gym to, uh, <laughs> to your son's room. <laughs> We've had a, it's been a great little fun this morning, this morning. Yeah. But, Trying to find the best lighting. <laughs> it, it is. It works out good. I like it. It's been, it's yeah. been fun. It's been fun. So, man, welcome again. And, and uh, super excited you're coming to me this morning from, from uh, sunny California. Yeah? Yep, San Diego. San Diego. Love California. Used to live there yeah. as well. I miss it a lot. I live down in San B area, down in the booming metropolis of Barstow, California. So, oh wow, <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody says. Yeah, it was really oh wow back in the '80s. There was nothing there. We had like a Kmart, <laughs> I think a uh, couple of rest stops, and some drug joints or something like that. That's another story. <laughs> so, man, tell me about what you're doing over there in San Diego, Orlando. What's happening in your life? And uh, I know you're you're writing books and and you're traveling, you're speaking, you've got all kinds of neat things going in your life. I mean, how did how did that all happen? Uh, you know what, um, by trade, I'm a bookkeeper and tax preparer, but, uh, I would say in 2007, I had my God moment where I encountered God. And ever since I had that God moment with him, all of a sudden he started opening up all these doors, especially, um, in writing. The funny thing is, is, uh, I wasn't a good writer at all. Uh, bad in English. I would think I was a C English student. Uh, <laughs> and so all of a sudden God's just downloading these stories and I start writing and I know it's him because I know what kind of a English student I am. And every time I actually try to write something, I usually draw a blank. But when I say, God, I forgot, I, I, I can't write, but you can through me. All of a sudden he opens the doors and, and I look at the stories and I'm like, wow, that's, that's all God. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Uh, I totally understand how that works too. Uh, and people are like, man, you're so good. It's like, if you just only knew, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm not that good. It's totally, totally the Lord. Some folks just don't understand that. Um, yeah. So 2007, you said you had a God moment. You were some bookkeeper tax guy sitting down at a computer and a calculator and your pencil pushing and whatnot. And then, uh, I mean, what were you like before 2007? I mean, what happened? Well, I would say, uh, I knew of God. I grew up in the church. My mom and my dad, we raised us in the church, but I I went mainly just to go. It was something I learned, but 
it, I was never really into church. If, if anything, I was on my phone checking football scores. Uh, <laughs> that, that was one of the issues I dealt with. I, I had a problem gambling. And uh, so when I did go to church, I'd be checking my phone, looking at the football move before you could actually see live streaming and just checking to see if my bets would win. And so by being how a church- old were you, How old were you back then? How old was I back then? Well, uh, it'd be 30? 30, 30 uh, years old. Yes. Wow. Uh, workaholic, that was definitely one of my struggles. Uh, I learned early that I liked work. I liked work more than school. Uh, and so I thought my goal was to provide. And, you know, I, I thought, thought I did very well at providing. But uh, sometimes when you lose track, trying to chase the almighty dollar, your providing becomes more of an addiction and takes you away from where you're needed, which is at home. But uh, I felt a lot of purpose at work. Uh, not that I didn't feel it at home. I just, uh, just wanting to make more, trying to yeah. get the nicer, bigger houses, nicer cars and things. Yeah. Like that. Chase the dollar, keeping up with the Joneses. Exactly. Nobody, nobody's ever experienced that before. That's <laughs> <laughs> so 2007 happens. Um, what was the, was there an, oh, or I mean, what happened? Yeah, let's see here. My, my marriage was, was the, the key, the key thing that got me there was my, my marriage was falling apart. Uh, finances were a struggle. Uh, even though I was working a lot, you know, we were spending a lot. So that became very stressful. And, you know, my wife and I, we would be sitting in front of each other at dinner time. She'd just look at me and ask me why we even together because I wasn't talking anymore. I was too busy with work, too busy with, uh, too busy with sports, too busy with my addiction. I had an addiction to pornography. And every time she asked me, you know, what was on my heart, they didn't want to tell her. I'd say nothing because the only thing that was in my heart was uh, the darkness that I was consuming. So I usually just bit my lip. And when she wanted to converse, I'd say, I, I got nothing to say. Mm. And I came to realize, you know, um, after she would say that numerous times, why are we even together? I, yeah, I realized that I was at fault and I, I wanted to change. Started reading a bunch of self-help books, you know, Tony Robbins, Zig Ziglar, trying to be better. But they taught me how to love myself more, but uh, that didn't always equate to loving my family more. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, because I saw that struggle, I decided, you know what, I need to, I need to seek something because these self-help books are taking me only so far. And uh, my chiropractor, uh, I, had, I was dealing with some back pain. And my chiropractor, there was something about him. It was like he had this light, you know, that radiated from him. And I just asked him, you know, what are you all about? And he just started sharing with me, you know, the gospel. And I learned from someone else that he had held a 5 a.m. prayer group. Uh, basically asked, hey, can I come? I need it. And he said, sure. Showed up to this prayer group thinking there was just going to be a bunch of guys praying. But what I saw was the most profound thing that I ever see. Uh, I saw men pray. Not, not simple, uh, simple prayers, but profound uh, God-filled prayers. Men were speaking in tongues. Uh, men were uh, praying in the authority of Christ. And I was like, I thought I watched Spider-Man for the first time. <laughs> like, what am I? At? What am I doing? Where am I at? Yeah, I wanted. I wanted to get bit with whatever they had. And sure enough, I pulled them aside and I says, "Whatever you guys have, I want." Mm -hmm. And sure enough, they all laid hands on me and prayed that the Holy Spirit would would come into my life and. Uh, would, and I would allow the Holy Spirit to lead. And that was, that was the, that was the, that was the start. The faith. Yeah, that's a good start. Yeah. So I would ask you then at that moment, um, your struggles with, uh, with um, gambling, pornography, right? Those types of things. Was it a, was there a, a instant transformation? Was there uh, a moment of transformation? I mean, how did that happen to occur in your life through that moment? Um, the porn, the porn um, was the one I, I knew definitely was the biggest problem. 
uh, I knew it existed. I knew that that was a wedge between my wife and I. And uh, I would say, you know, I was, I, after that one day that I met those guys, I started actually reading my Bible, started downloading messages from um, their pastor, Christian City Church, and started just listening to their pastor. And he basically said, you know, you have to get rid of the things that prevent you from walking with God. And porn was the issue. Uh, and I'm listening to that. I'm like, he's speaking directly to me. And I realized that, that was something that I needed to eradicate. Now, was it instant? It, it wasn't. It was instant when I realized I needed to make the change. But it's definitely been a progressive, um, you know, breakthrough. You know, yeah. you, you fall down, you learn how to get up. You fall down, you learn how to get up. You find different tools in order to uh, break those uh, those, that bondage. Yeah, it's definitely a bondage uh, for anyone. Um, even scientifically speaking, there is a, uh, a couple of, well, there's a lot of, of research out there, but uh, even with uh, pornography, for example, uh, and men and both women uh, all struggle with mm -hmm. pornography uh, that, that deal with it. Uh, it's like, uh, like a heroin thing. I mean, um, as soon as you do it, um, it's actually chemically locked into your brain. And there's a region in the brain that that requires it. And that is where that begins to become the addiction where you cannot stop. And uh, it just becomes a, a life overwhelming situation. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, and, and I know as well that um, one of the main blessings of, of becoming a Christian is that he says that we have a we're a new creation and yeah. that uh, old things pass away, all things become new. And he gives us the mind of Christ. That means we have to, we have to put it on. I mean, uh -huh. we're, we are open to, we're free, free from all those things, but you know, the, the, this remembers everything and, and this wants everything. And we have to tell this, uh, no, <laughs> we have the power. <laughs> we have the power now to do that. And, uh, beforehand, um, I didn't, I know you didn't either. I had, I had some addictions in my life as well. And, uh, same same scenario. So what a what a major obs obstacle to overcome, and what an amazing blessing that you have. So I assume that um, that was pretty major in your family and your life. Um, what's that been like between you and your wife since that happened? I mean, is are you all going to church together now as a family? Is it something that's part of the whole family now, or is it just you? Or what's that like? Uh, it's all it's all all family now. Uh, in the very beginning, uh, you know, I was on fire. You know, I'm like, we got to go to church. We got to go to church. I'm reading my Bible. I was like, I was blazing. And it, it took my wife off guard. She was all like, whoa. You know, because at the time when we went to church, we mainly just went to the to the coffee shop where we can watch it on TV. Because uh, uh, we, we were splitting churches at the time. Uh, I, we were going to a non-denominational church. That's where I wanted to go. Uh, but she wanted to... Uh, stick with her roots in the Catholic faith. So, you know, we, we did butt a lot of heads, you know. Yeah, talking, big difference. Talking doctrine. Um, and uh, we, we eventually got to the point where we decided to uh, plant ourselves in the Catholic Church. And that's definitely been one of the best things that happened to our family because I wanted so much to be tied to a church very difficult when you're going from one church to another to satisfy learning styles. And eventually it came to the point where I just prayed, Lord, make my wife a uh, Protestant. And, <laughs> God change my wife. So she's more like me, please. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I've never prayed that prayer before. <laughs> the funny thing is, is one day God just touched me and he says, why don't you become Catholic? And I'm like, that wasn't my prayer. <laughs> and I, I kept on praying and I kept praying. And then finally God said, look, you know, there's a fire inside of you. I know because I put it there and I can use you in the non-denominational Protestant church uh, where there's a fire and you can be a flame within the fire. Um, but if you're willing, um, I could use you as a spark in the Catholic church. Mm, that's so good. Yeah. And I was like, Whoa, uh, <laughs> that one really, that one really hit home. And, I called my wife on the phone after I absorbed that and I accepted it. And I told her, Hey, we're going to, 
uh, dedicate our, our time to the Catholic Church. And all of a sudden, our marriage just started to flourish because we became one. You know, as the Bible says, you know, when you get married, two become one. For many years, we were separated. Uh, and by deciding to come together at church in one place, we became united and our conversations got better, our relationship grew, and our faith definitely flourished. Mm, that's fantastic. Yeah. What a huge blessing. So you got, you got a whole lot that day at the chiropractor, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, that was a good back crack that day. <laughs> it was. That cracked a whole lot. Amazing. <laughs> so you have, uh, you've been able to do so much. So you were doing taxes and, uh, and whatnot back then, and um, you had some, some transformation, and you're able to start writing some books. And, um, I mean, how's that work for you with work? I mean, what were you doing for, for work and jobs and stuff? Uh, well, and th that's another God moment uh, for me. Um, in 2009, um, you know, I'm still, you know, at the early stages of my faith walk, and the real estate market crashes. And I'm a bookkeeper for a real estate company. And all of a sudden, there's no more money to count. So I become obsolete. And so I find myself uh, without a job and uh, talk about, you know, being in a dark place. I've, uh, I've worked ever since I was 15 years old, uh, always enjoyed work, but here I am unemployed, not being able to provide for the family, maybe losing the house and Christmas is coming along and I can't even think we can't even cover Christmas presents. Uh, but, uh, that that's where God shows his, uh, you know, is his faithfulness. Cause I kept going to that men's group every Tuesday morning and just shared my struggles with the, with the guys. And all of a sudden, you know, one of the guys comes up to me afterwards and says, Hey, you know, you said you're a bookkeeper. You know, my wife's a bookkeeper. Why don't you maybe get some, some tutelage under her? Sure enough. I, I meet with her. Uh, she gives me an assignment. One month later, she says, all right, you did a great job. Now go get your own clients. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to like carry me for a while, but uh, she didn't. She basically said, you know, you're ready to go. Just got to go get your own clients. You know what you're doing. And, and that's such a, such a blessing because she could have tied me to work for her. And, you know, but she said, you're, you're ready to go. Just, just go do it. And, uh, God's been, God's been great. Uh, helped me build a bookkeeping business, a tax practice. And that's what allows me to, uh, provide for my family today. Oh, wow. So you're still doing it, but now you're doing it for yourself versus working for, uh, the real estate company, getting just a regular paycheck, but now you're, exactly. you're mm -hmm. getting lots of paychecks. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and by going through that process, that's what gives me a lot of, uh, I would say information that I like to share on, um, um, on LinkedIn, you know, like, you know, motivational tips, business tips. I share networking tips because, uh, I, it, it, you don't just all of a sudden become an entrepreneur and make money. You got to learn. You got to <laughs> wait a minute. Stop. You, you mean I can't just go 10 X today and just be rich. <laughs> if I give you $5,000, I can't have 50. What do you mean? <laughs> You, I'm, crushed, you know, I'm crushed now. I'm crushed. It's funny how you said $5,000. When I was first looking for a job and wasn't getting any callbacks, I went to a headhunter and they promised me $90,000 job. And I'm like, well, that sounds nice. Says, All you got to do is pay me uh, $5,000 and we'll get you that job. I'm like, <laughs> I've never heard that one before. <laughs> I love it. Oh, it's so funny. It's so funny. It's sadly funny. Guys on LinkedIn, I'm telling you, there's so many shark gurus out there. Please, please, please listen yeah. up hard. Listen hard. Not everything is, is going to be, there's no such thing as get rich quick. Nothing. Yes. Yeah. No. Got to invest in yourself. I believe in investing in ourselves and there's, there's a price tag with that. Um, exactly. but invest in the right place. Good Lord have mercy. <laughs> Amen. Amen to so, that. So you, uh, so that you know, obviously the, the show is called hope revealed and and uh, you've had a lot of hope revealed in your life that's been amazing it's been many hopes that have been revealed but that particular time 
that was a dark moment, especially when you've got kids and family and you're like, I don't know where anything's going to come from. And um, it sounds to me like that hope revealed may, may very well have been uh, the lady that you went to work for that opened up your eyes to, to doing something on your own and, and making sure you were equipped to do it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's amazing. So what would, what was that moment like for you? Um, to, uh, it was, it was very, very humbling, um, especially when it came to that Christmas. Uh, I still remember, um, you know, me and my buddies from high school, we would always get together. Um, the kid, we, you know, the kids would, would exchange gifts, uh, parents would exchange gifts. And, um, I remember calling my friend who was putting it together. His name was Eric. And I said, Hey, um, could you kind of give me a hint right before we give the gifts? Uh, I'm going to pull my family out because uh, we, we can't afford presents this year. And my friend said the best thing to me. He said, man, don't, don't, <laughs> we've known each other too long. I got your back. And he invited me to lunch, um, uh, you, know, uh, you know, a couple of days later and we had lunch and when we were done, he basically handed me an envelope and in it was over $300 in cash and gift cards and he says, Christmas is taken care of. And I was just like, wow, you know, God, God, God got this. Yeah. And, uh, uh, <laughs> God got this exactly. <laughs> you know, it, it was trusting in God and it was being willing to share your struggles because had I not shared my struggles, my friend would have never known. He would have thought everything was okay. Um, and that's really taught me a lot. If you want things, you know, if you need things from God, you got to definitely talk to him. And then you also have to reach out to, uh, your friends and family. Um, not, not so much about, you know, I need a hand up, I need a hand up, but at least share your struggles. And if somebody's around that has the means to, to help out, then by all means, God will use that person to, uh, share his gifts. No, there's no doubt. That's one of the blessings of the, of a, a family. And, um, you know, you have not because you ask not is mm -hmm. a, is a pretty powerful scripture. Um, I wish it would say you have not be asked because you ask not, but just don't, don't take it too far. It's like what a sibling <laughs> should be. It's like, uh, there's a difference between need and begging. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the Bible says I've never seen my child begging for bread. So, Big difference, mm -hmm. but anyway, that's a whole other whole other uh, story and another lesson. What a what an amazing opportunity that you've had in your life that has opened up the doors for you to share what you now uh, call God's moment and God's moments, um, which what really turned me on when I saw you because I I do something very similar, and uh, it's it's been pretty fun to see what what that perspective looks like in in your life, and uh, and how God's using that, so. Um, I would assume that your book uh, shares some things. One, I mean, you talked about finding God with your underwear. I mean, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yeah, definitely. That that that's uh, that's definitely one of the funny stories I have with God. Uh, you know, I was I was I was praying in, in the early stages of my faith walk, and I just pray, Lord, talk to me. I hear that you talk to your kids, and uh, I'm ready to listen. Um, and one day, He said. You know, I'm in a, I'm in the parking lot and um, there's trash on the ground. And I, I think I hear God say, pick it up. So I look up and I say, is that you, God? And it wasn't like an audible voice. It was more of a, you know, tapping on my heart. And I thought, you know, if that's you, God, then I'm going to be obedient. If it's not you, God, then at least I'm doing something. At uh, least I'm cleaning up some trash. Doing something for the world. Yeah. And, you know, I got home and I'm like, wow, God's talking to me. That's cool. I, sh I sent an email to all my friends and family. Hey, this is what God said to me. And, you know, and that's kind of how the book started is every time I'd have a moment, I would shoot an email to my friends and family. This is what God's saying to me. And this is how I, I, I correlated it. And then, uh, you know, I did it again. I prayed, Lord, talk to me again. And again, I'm in a parking lot and God says, hey, uh, you see that shopping cart? Put it away. And I'm thinking, this one right here? He goes, no, all of them. <laughs> all of them. There's a lot of shopping carts out there. 
And again, I, it was it was a it was a it was a tapping on the heart. And I said, God, if that's you, then I'm going to do it. If not, then I'm going to help somebody do her job today. And then that led me to the next part where I said, Do it again, Lord. I love how you talk to me. And I walk out of a gym, and on the ground is underwear. And I I immediately shake my head. I don't even wait for God to speak to me. I just shake I ain't my picking head. that up, God. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm picking that up. <laughs> And then I walk away and all of a sudden God just like reaches into my heart and says, Orlando, I heard your prayers. You want me to use you? And I will. Uh, but before I can use you for the big things, I got to see if you'll be trustworthy with the little things. And to those profound words, I, I got a plastic bag because that's still underwear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't tell you how to pick it up. He just said, pick it up. Pick it up exactly. I got some tongs and I got some. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, God just started doing that. He would he would up the the asks of me, and he would open more doors. But then he would always bring me back. You know, he would always humble me. You know, because every time things start getting bigger, you know, he would have me speak to a group. He would have me write a book. All of a sudden, he would say, "You know, this bathroom you're walking into is pretty filthy. Would you mind cleaning it?" And I'm like, "This is a park." restroom oh. pile of toilet paper in one corner overflowing toilet and i'm thinking nope not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> next thing you know i have to go to the bathroom three times and finally i say i get it i get it and sure enough i grab some plastic bags like big bags and i pick up whatever i can and dump whatever i can and i'm just walking out of there hurl, getting ready to hurl and i'm like that is a, ooh, that is a very humbling God moment. But so you were told to go clean up the bathroom. Said no, but then at the same place you had to go to the bathroom like three times. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, you're I in control of all things, including my bladder, God. <laughs> That's right. I love it. Talk about a God moment. Good Lord have mercy. I'm getting the bag, God. Good grief. Can I stop peeing here for a minute? Yeah. Exactly. I find them in the bathroom. I find them in the, mainly in parking lots all the time. And even <laughs> Underwear, bathrooms. I love this guy. Yeah. Yeah, my, so. son, my son would have a blast talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> he loves that kind of stuff. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. Well, man, I think it's so amazing to hear about those moments in your life and what God's been doing and and how you're able to uh, to hear is really the, the biggest thing to be able to, uh, I mean, that's what God really wants from us after all is to be able to, well, a couple of things, but one of the main thing is to be able to hear his voice. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, yeah, whatever. I mean, does he sound like Matt, do this, right? And a lot of times it's, that's <laughs> not the case. I mean, all the times it's not that case for me. Anyway, yeah. It's always been what he's been like for you, which is the tapping on the heart. It's uh it's just something that you know. It's very hard to express unless you experience. Um, but it's you know the best we can say is it's just that that heart tug that thing, and uh, that's just, some folks can understand that for sure. Um, yeah. It's like an intuition, I guess, in a sense, is another way to put it. Um, and sometimes you just have to say yes or no to it, right? I mean, I before I was a Christian, I would have moments where I'd think about helping somebody and and feel like I should, and I didn't feel a you know, my gut would feel horrible, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, I think that's the Lord, really. Um, so amazing what you're doing. So now you're doing some taxes and bookkeeping, and everything for yourself. You're writing books, you're sharing things, you're, you're able to speak now at different places, and uh, you're sharing information with folks about um, how they can uh, do some things for themselves and business, business tips and information, motivation, stuff you're doing with people on LinkedIn, which I think is awesome. It's how we met on LinkedIn. So how is a, how is a place or where's a place where folks can get uh, in contact with you and find out more about you, your books. Uh, maybe if they're interested in having you come speak, uh, how would they, how would they find you? Um, for, um, for social media, I'm only on LinkedIn. So, you know, connect with me on LinkedIn. That's the best way to get a hold of me social media wise. Uh, for speaking, I am part of a speakers bureau, uh, Catholic speakers. So just go to catholicspeakers.com, enter my name and, um, one of the things I've learned in business is I can't be everything, uh, managing my speaking and things like that. So I basically just have somebody managing that for me. They take care of all the contracts. Um, book wise, you'd be able to find my books on Amazon. 
Well, that's awesome. And they can go to your website for that? Um, for the books, you can purchase on Amazon. You can go to Amazon and just type in my name, Orlando Javier. Great. Yeah, we'll have that. Uh, it will be edited. It'll be back. Let's see, that way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> with him. With uh, him over there. I could never get... There we go. Him. <laughs> <laughs> it would have, have, have been a minute ago. So uh, that's fantastic. Thank you so much, Orlando, for sharing some of those stories with us in those moments and that, that hope revealed in your life. And, and uh, it was a dark place, but then there was an opportunity, uh, a moment where um, somebody came into your life through somebody else, another circumstance situation. You were led into uh, the life of somebody else, and uh, mm -hmm. she poured into you for uh, a month. And, uh, and launched you into where you're at today. And that's just been, been amazing. Um, and what it really comes down to is that it's possible. Yes. Right? Amen to that. Yeah. So there's always going to be. So that's the biggest thing for folks to remember here on, on the show. Thank you so much for being with us today. Definitely go check out Orlando. And remember, no matter what, and if you're in a dark place, if there's a circumstance or situation where you just feel like, ah, they don't know if there's anything going on, <laughs> trust me. Right around the corner, there will always, always be a Hope Revealed. Thanks again for tuning in to Hope Revealed. For those of you that are listening, you can always find us at podbean.com, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you'd like to find your favorite podcasts. Make sure you like us, download us, and definitely share us. You can also find us at LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook to watch the video version. I hope today you found a Hope Revealed. Hope Revealed.